Welcome back to It's Not a Sport, Season 2, Episode 19. Um, this week is probably going to be a shorter episode because there wasn't a whole lot of news or anything really to talk about. Um, you know, with E3 just happening, it's some tidbits of like E3 stuff still running around, but really nothing super newsworthy. Plus, with me doing an hour episode each uh, for the last couple episodes, um, probably not going to talk as much. But if you want all the E3 coverage, uh, I highly recommend you go and listen to those episodes. So, first off, let's get into esports. Now, at the time of recording this, both the Overwatch League and um, the LCS are currently playing, as well as the Magic Mythic uh, Championship number three is also going on if you want to enter if you're into magic uh the gathering so a couple esports events that are happening um and then also the big concluding news is that this weekend was the end of the fortnite world cup qualifiers so you either i believe you either qualified for the world cup and you didn't and that should be happening relatively soon probably either like mid-July uh that should be happening in New York City so look forward to that um there's actually also some really interesting kind of tidbit tidbit news about Fortnite which we can get into later but in the LCS Team Liquid and Optic are tied for first being uh five wins two losses TSM Cloud9 Counterlogic Gaming and Golden Guardians are all tied for third, being four wins, two losses, with Golden Guardians only having three losses. Or four, they either have four wins, three losses, or four wins, two losses. Clutch Gaming is in seventh place, which are three and three. Echo Fox, FlyQuest, and 100 Trash are tied for eighth place, which is last place, being one and five. In Europe, there we go. In Europe, sorry, I had to load. Uh, Fnatic is six and zero, and they're in first place. G two is in second place, being five and one. Splice is in third place with uh, four wins, two losses. SK Gaming, Origins, and Skellic. 04 are all tied for fourth being three and three rogue is tied rogue misfits and team vitality are tied for seventh being two and four and excel is in last place being zero and six in the lck griffin is in first place being five and one. Game one, Sandbox and King Zone are all tied for second place, being four and one or four and two. Genji and Afrika are tied for fifth, being three and two. Hang Zoo Life and KT Roster are tied for seventh, being two wins, four losses, and then two wins, three losses. SKT uh is in ninth place being one win five losses and gen one green uh gen or gen air green wings are in tenth place being zero and six then we have rift rivals which should be probably soon um we have na versus eu and then kr china lms and or kr nc that's not china uh lms and then or maybe that is China. Uh, VN are all in their own Rift Rivals. Uh, so two international tournaments. For, in my recommendation, the Asian team one is probably, or Eastern tournament is probably more entertaining um, because a lot of hard-hitting world championship teams are there. Uh, we can go over the teams real quick. That being Evo, Esports, Dame One Gaming, 
Darshan, Buffaloes, SKT, Flash Wolves, King Zone, Invictus, JD Game, Top Esports, Fun Plus, Mad Team, and Griffin. And then NA is kind of, will probably be dead. Uh, the teams that will be participating for NA versus EU will be Origins, TSM, Fnatic, Cloud9, G2, and Team Liquid would probably G2 or Fnatic winning uh, because that's what usually happens. But moving on, in China, Fun Plus Phoenix are first, Royals, LNG, and Sunning are all tied for second, Edward, Invictus, Billabing, and Top Esports are all tied for fifth. Victory 5, oh my god, LGD Gaming, JD Gaming are all tied for 9th. Team WE is in thir 13th place. And then Dominus, Vinci, and Rogue Warriors are all tied for 14th. Alright. Moving on to the Overwatch League. Uh, Vancouver is in 1st, followed by New York, San Francisco, Hangzhou, Seoul Dynasty, Los Angeles Valiants. Houston Outlaws, Shanghai Dragons, and then we had the stage playoff cutoff point. Uh, playoff cutoff point, that's hard to say. Los Angeles Gladiators is in ninth. Then London, Paris, Philadelphia, Gangzhou, Chengdu Hunters, Dallas, Toronto, Florida, Washington, Atlanta, and Boston Uprising is in last. And currently at the time of recording this, Toronto and Gangzhou Chargers are playing. In terms of releases, uh, early access releases will be starting on next Tuesday, so next week, uh, for Final Fantasy Shadowbringers. Of course, that's what I'm super excited for. And then June 8th, which will be next Friday, is when Super Mario Maker 2 releases. And then moving into July, we have Shadowbringers official release on July 2nd. And then on July 4th, we have Stranger Things 3, the game. Uh, I think also Stranger Things uh, 3, the actual Netflix series, is supposed to come off, con uh, it's supposed to go live also on July 4th. Um, and we're going to stop there. There's a lot of small things happening in July, I think. Uh, I know that there, if you're here in Chicago, there's going to be a um, CSGO tournament being held at like the end of the month. So a lot of small things in July that we will be covering. So, let's move on to the announcements. Uh, first things first, there's been a decline in Fortnite revenue. So, if you don't know anything about that, Fortnite has been slowing down on uh, how much money they've made. It's also been slowing down on viewership and Twitch compared to last year. Uh, 2018, last year, uh, was really Fortnite's prime, and now it's really the popularity is starting to slow down. Um, I think reasons because of this is that the decisions that Epic has made as a company on how to run Fortnite has not been uh, very good. Uh, when you pump out content, 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 uh, it seems it just divides the player base. So that's one thing I think, you know, their decision making. Um, the two is that I think people are finally realizing that Battle Royale is not really a super fun genre it's uh it's fixed you know it's there's a lot of rng involved in it um it's very it's short attention spanny and with like currently how humans are we have really short attention spans um that's why when i first started the show it was originally an hour and then i brought it down to 30 minutes generally um so with battle royales just times are changing. I think they're falling out of favor. Um, I don't think it'll super die anytime soon, but it's definitely falling out of favor. Um, so yeah, that's the deal with that. Also, starting tomorrow will be the start of SGDQ 2019. So Summer Games is done quick. Uh, 2019. So if you don't know, uh, Games Done Quick is the organization that they, you know, ask speedrunners to come and then they stream different games and they try to speedrun them and you, you, the viewer, donates to a charity of whatever charity they're doing uh, each year. 
They do it twice a year. They do summer games and they do awesome games. Um, they're super fun to watch. Uh, so I highly recommend that if you're bored or you just need something to look forward to. Of course, it, also if you're going to play Shadowbringers or any other game, uh, definitely watch some of these speedruns. Um, to go over, we're going to be all going over the list uh, just to like see if there's any games um, that you want to watch. I think I'll be going over the highlights that I think will be interesting for me. Uh, one will be Portal 2, uh, which will take um, an hour and 15 minutes to complete. They have Super Mario uh, Bros. 2, which will take 25 minutes to complete. Sonic Generations, which takes generally an hour. The Devil May Cry Any Percent PC, which takes 57 minutes. Um, moving on to day two. They have Metroid, which takes 15 minutes uh, to complete. That's any percent. Castlevania block. Well, they have Castlevania, which takes 15 minutes to complete. Castlevania Symptoms of the Night, which takes 46. Castlevania Portals to Ruin, which takes 55 minutes. Prey. Uh, all main quest PC which takes an hour and 20 minutes to complete Titanfall 2 which takes an hour and 32 minutes Borderlands 2 co-op all quest which will take 3 hours to complete Metroid Prime which takes a, uh, 1 hour and 16 minutes Metroid Prime 2 Echoes uh, 120 Uncharted Drake's Fortune which takes 49 minutes to complete this is day 3 um, Kirby we have, uh, Kirby Air Riders uh, Kirby 64 uh, Crash Bandicoot the Insane Trilogy, Crash Bandicoot 3, Warp Any Percent PC, which would take 59 minutes to complete. Punch Out, Pokemon Chris Crystal Glitchless, which would take 3 hours 55 minutes. Uh, the Legend of Zelda Randomizer, which takes will take 59 minutes. Resident Evil 2, 2019. So this is something that uh, I am definitely... Uh, Looking forward to uh, watching. Uh, Resident Evil 2 has been a very good game this year, and it's probably been probably the game of the year contender. I think I've yet to complete it. I have to do Claire B, but it will be a race. Um, it'll take a, generally the estimated is an hour and eight minutes. Um, it's this year Resident Evil 2, so it's the remake, and it's Claire A versus Leon A. So two people will be playing both runs, and uh, they'll be doing as fast as can. As fast as they can and I know like the world record for Leon A is like 53 minutes so that should be super fun to watch um, moving on to Wednesday June 26 uh, another Sonic's Adventures DX director's cut it takes 10 minutes uh, Castlevania DOS takes 16 minutes Furry, Nuclear Throne, Mega Man X2, uh, one hour and ten minutes. The Legend of Zelda, A Link Between Worlds, three hours and fifteen minutes. Dark Souls 2, all bosses with DLC, two hours and thirty-five minutes. Um, moving on to Thursday, Looney Tunes, fifteen minutes. Metal Slug, a lot of these games I haven't even heard of, but they're probably uh, the glitchiest ones. Another one, a uh, big one for me, will be Kingdom Hearts 3 Any Percent Beginner Co-op Relay PS4, which will take 3 hours and 40 minutes. Uh, so they're doing a relay race for Kingdom Hearts 3, which is the game that also came out early this year. So it'll be really cool to see the new speed run tax and how that's developed. Moving on to Friday, we have Sly Cooper in the Thieves, Thieving Raccoon, uh, Star Fox 64, Quake, Diablo 2, Half-Life. Jilly at the end of these things is when we see like a lot of the good games being played. Half-Life 2, uh, Minecraft, or you know that, Octopath Traveler, Rocket Man, Mega Man 3, Mega Man 11, Tetris Effect, uh, Taskbot, which is super really fun. It's a bot program to just do it as fucking fast as possible. It's playing Tetris. It's also playing Mario Kart Wii. Uh, there'll be a bonus game. Uh, Dark Souls, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, uh, No Amiibos, which will be uh, completed in 35 minutes. The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, probably doing that to hype up the new game. 
uh, which we do have news on, which will take five uh, five hours, so that's a big one. Uh, moving on to Saturday, uh, Lara Croft Tomb Raider, The Elder Scrolls Five Skyrim, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, uh, another bonus game, Chrono Trigger, I know that's a big one, that's six hours, glitchless, Jesus Christ, uh, I know that's a big one for people. Uh, Link to the Past with Super Mario Metroid Combo Ramanizer, and then it ends uh, on the 30th of June at the end of the month. So definitely something to look forward to. The last bits of news uh, is concerning Breath of the Wilds and kind of Sony or Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft, well, let's get into Microsoft first. Uh, they're developing a console for a uh, lower end entry for Xbox for um, people to just jump into gaming something cheap, cheaper than the normal Xbox. But with the addition of Stadia, it kind of changes the game. So they scrapped that. And then, you know, they're also pushing their own streaming service, which is xCloud, which was there, which uh, from what I heard from a video that I was watching the people who got to play it, xCloud was good it worked it was a little laggy compared to stadia which had no lag but it worked so again streaming coming into the uh the mix of the gaming world which uh which we will see in the next decade uh very interesting um it's gonna change the game a lot it's going to really just change everything so it's definitely something i think everyone should keep their eye on um because it's going to open up the market to people who can't afford it. But you have to keep in mind that a lot of people will not have high speed internet and a lot of people have, you know, data caps on their internet. So we don't know exactly how it works, but it's going to be interesting to see where it goes. So moving on to the Legend of Zelda news. Uh, like I said, uh, last episode, which I caught, uh, Breath of the Wild's 2 remake was originally supposed to be a. DLC and it seemed like a DLC but they decided that they just had so much inspiration that they there's just need to be its its own brand new game which is fantastic I'm super cool with that that's fine um there's speculation that Zelda will be a playable character so maybe you'll play as Zelda instead of Link which will explain like you losing the master sword and all your gear at the end of Breath of the Wild um this kind of speculation goes around because if you look at the trailer, Zelda's cut her hair, which in anime culture, which I've you know since doing my research and actually like reading a lot of manga now and thinking about it, um, we have it when an anime culture, an anime culture, when the female cuts their hair, it means they're kind of done with being the princess, and you know they're going on to be this you know super badass chick. Which I've seen, since I've done the research on that, I've seen that a lot more in a different in uh, different uh, mangas. We can see this as in like Naruto with uh, Sakura. She originally had long hair, and then eventually she cut it. There's some other ones uh, that aren't coming to mind, uh, but that's um, definitely a thing that is interesting to develop the plot. Also, the corpse is not really. People speculate be it being Ganon, but we're not too sure if it's Ganon, but it's probably Ganon. So that's kind of the Breath of the Wild news. Uh, small it bits, internet theory, uh, super fun. I don't know. For me, I would. It's cool. I would be cool if like you know they do sections on the game. Like maybe you play Zelda, uh, but um, you know I kind of want them to go on the journey together and not be separated. But the, we'll see. Nintendo generally does a good job with these things. Uh, I think the last bit of news that comes to mind too, uh, speaking of anime culture, is that Gitma, uh, which had, I believe, like 705 chapters, has finally concluded. So that just puts to rest another great shonen title that has finally uh, ended. I never, personally never got into Gitma, uh, but from the clips that I've seen, it was really actually kind of funny. Uh, some of the stuff that the author has done so that coming to an end it's sad to see it go but it's joining Naruto and Bleach and all the other ones up in heaven um, let's pray it doesn't get a spin off like Shippuden or Naruto did and that is actually a great segue to uh, what I want to talk about today on today's show 
um, what I wanted to talk about was storytelling. Um, within this year, we've seen a lot of stories kind of conclude. Um, Game of Thrones being probably the biggest pop culture one, and a lot of people were pissed at that. And why? Well, it's because of the ending. What makes and breaks the story is the ending. Um, the ending is probably the most important part of any story. Uh, doesn't matter how many years your story runs on to, or drags on, or you know how many chapters or parts or anything like that. It's the ending that really makes and breaks. I've been reading the JoJo's because uh, our JoJo's Bizarre Adventures because part five the anime is about to end which had a great ending it was wacky it was weird and it just concluded the entire mission of the story but then moving on to part six which is the, probably one of the most disliked parts uh people are mad about the ending but i understand that ending if you read it i don't want to spoil it but that ending is it's, it has a different intent so when I was taking a class, screenwriting class, and this is, you know, learning being a college student, uh, one of the things my instructor said was that you can't write a story unless you know what the ending will be. Um, so being on that, I just thought about that, and now reading and kind of analyzing these stories a little bit more, if I look back at, like, Mass Effect ending, right? Mass Effect 3. People love that game. That game is really good. However, it got so much slack for how it ended that it's regarded as probably one of the worst Mass Effects. If you look at Game of Thrones, right? Game of Thrones' series is really fucking good. Um, and then the ending just kind of happens. The, I, usually when it comes to endings, I'm kind of immune to them. I don't really judge them as being good or bad. I judge it as an ending, um, but it does have an impact on me. For instance, Game of Thrones, and spoilers alert, uh, Bran being named the king was such a huge disappointment for me that it also, it just threw everything out of the window. He didn't earn it. He didn't deserve it. Um, that ending was terrible. That's an ending that you never want to go for it because it undermines your characters. Uh, I want to talk about JoJo Part 6 ending because that ending also got a lot of slack because at that ending, nobody wins, right? And most endings, uh, when you end a story, you mostly want to end it on a happy note, you know? But in that ending, nobody wins. And, uh, you know, the universe gets reset. But that ending wasn't intended to end that really that story. It was intended to restart the JoJo franchise as a whole so we look at that ending and that season you know the story was okay i had a problem with the setting but then we look at the ending of uh stone ocean and nobody wins and it's kind of like well that's it you know i didn't get anything you know really but then we move on to steel ball run right which is part seven and it's a fantastic story i'm still in the middle of it i'm getting close to the end but i'm loving it uh, so we can see the intent of that ending versus that ending. And then we look at Game of Thrones, right? Um, one, the books aren't finished, right? So these guys had nothing to go off. They're also terrible writers, and now they're moving on to fuck up the Star Wars series. But the Game of Thrones ending was forced, you know? It was wrapped up, and it was a disappointment not because, well... It was an ending you were just like well that's it it was a disappointment because um the development of the characters it it basically undermined everything that happened before that's why people were really mad uh everything that all the characters you loved with over the last you know 10 years since 2013 or 12 or whatever fucking year it aired uh everything that they did was meaningless and an ending like that is what a bad ending is uh we look at kingdom hearts as a game ending right uh one of the good ways to end a franchise i think is just to give a, a subtle death to the character um killing off a character is the best way to kind of end a franchise i think or giving him a nap a happy ending uh or his family a happy ending 
uh, Kingdom Hearts had this kind of ending where Sora, you know, kind of just kind of disappears. He just kind of dies. Uh, and that's it. And I was, you know, the game took 13 years to come out. It wasn't a fantastic game, but I was okay with that ending. Um, God of War, game of the year. Best part of that game was the ending, right? Not only was the journey fantastic, but when you get the ending, it gets the big reveal that your son is, you know, Loki. Spoilers there again, but, you know, I've advocated that you should have played this game. Uh, and uh, that, you know, Kratos was eventually going to become go to the end of his road and that they knew that this was all prophesized and whatever it was a great ending. It was a shocker ending. So what I'm trying to say is that when you write a story, make sure before you do anything that you have your end goal in mind. Once you have the ending, you can then be uh, start this from the beginning. You can introduce your characters. You can have them, you know, go through whatever arcs they want. But as long as they reach their goal, that's what matters. Um, and that kind of goes for life too. Um, if you can visualize yourself in a happy place or a good ending or whatever ending you want, whether reaching gold, uh, whether it is in any game, whether it is improving yourself at uh, any game or any sport, whether it's beating X amount of games or introducing, you know, uh, this type of genre to you or whatever it is, as long as you have that ending, you're bound to reach it eventually. Um, it's going to be tough. It's never easy, but you're bound to have whatever ending of your choosing eventually. So that's essentially going to conclude this week's show. Uh, it's a short show or normal size, not a whole lot in jam packed news. Uh, thank you for listening to this week's episode of it's not a sport. Um, catch us usually every Friday. Uh, the schedule has been kind of mixed recently, but catch us every Friday at 7 p.m. Central Time at twitch.tv slash Salty Waffles. If you want to listen to all of our past shows, they are up on SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, and then every past show, including Season 1, are all up on our YouTube. Uh, check out our website. It's not a sport uh, to you or uh, dot com. It's not a sport to you is our Instagram page on social media. Uh, please go follow us there for all of the updated news uh thank you for listening i hope you have a wonderful week and i hope you guys are able to watch uh games done quick because there's some super fun speed runs and they're really enjoyable to watch take care